what I can say about the full situation, this is a hot mess next to a dumpster fire inside of a car crash next to a train wreck. The state of our politics right now is absolute chaos. Liz Truss again resigning from her position just nearly uh, six weeks after being put uh, into that place. We do want to continue talking about some of that reaction that has been coming in, not just from some of those uh, party leaders, but also from the people uh, in Britain. I know they have had a big change up here, uh, not only with uh, their leaders, uh, we also had the queen who recently passed away, a new king, uh, and they've also been fighting uh, off other crises across their country. So we want to bring in here Josh Rahm, who's joining us on live now from Fox. And Josh, uh, why don't you just kind of explain some of uh, that re reaction here today? What are people saying about Tress's announcement? Well, what I can say about the full situation, this is a hot mess next to a dumpster fire inside of a car crash next to a train wreck. The state of our politics right now is absolute chaos. You know, Liz Truss is our shortest serving prime minister ever in the history books so i think it says something you know when it when when it comes to what she would be remembered for yes she'll be remembered for the energy package that she's put in place but her tenure and her, her and her administration is going to be known much more for its chaos conflict and, and infighting and talk about some of that chaos and conflict uh, what uh, have been some of the big major concerns for people in britain here as you guys have been uh, fighting off a few different crises Yes, yeah, so at the moment we have a mortgage crisis, an energy crisis, a financial crisis, um, the pound is in free fall, the markets are all over the place at the moment. So, you know, Liz Truss, um, in terms of her tenure as Prime Minister, you know, she, she, she six weeks ago, she when um, she was elected by the Conservative Party membership to be our Prime Minister, she vowed on the steps of Downing Street, she says she will deliver, 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 and she's delivered nothing but chaos when she and uh, the then Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng um, revealed their growth plan. The markets then went into free fall. Liz Truss has been forced to do U-turn upon U-turn on all of her policies. And today, you know, that's what she said on the steps of Downing Street today. She said she wanted a low tax, high growth um, economy, and she has been unable to deliver that. That was the mandate in which she was elected to do so. Um, you know, she fought out a very long, long fought um, and long drawn out leadership contest against uh, the ex-chancellor Rishi Sunak and it turns out that her policies that's what has been her downfall her policies trust trust economics as it has been dubbed in the UK trustonomics um has been nothing but an abstract failure for the country. You know, her, she was forced to sack her best friend and the Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, and instead hired somebody from the other faction, um, Jeremy Hunt, who basically reversed nearly every single one of their policies um, that wasn't put to the House of Commons yet, that wasn't put to legislation yet. So Liz Truss has unfortunately been forced to do U-turn upon U-turn on some of the core policies in which she promised to do and therefore that made her position within the government as prime minister untenable because other people like Jeremy Hunt have been seen to be running the country. She has been what's known as a Pino, a prime minister in name only. So her position became untenable and then it all culminated last night. There was due to be a vote in the House of Commons on fracking an environmental policy to which was going to be a confidence vote in the government. The minister who was at the dispatch box mistakenly said this is not a um, a confidence vote in the government to which that then resulted in scenes of absolute chaos where some members of the Conservative Party alleged bullying um, by other members of the party. There were scenes apparently of, I quote, uh, manhandling and shoving uh, the chief whip and the deputy chief whip both resigned and then um, unresigned. So there has been absolute chaos, meaning that Liz Truss's position as prime minister has has it, it, it is now untenable, which it, she has now been forced to then resign due to the absolute chaos you know this is uh, politics political careers you're known to die by the sword so to speak and well this has been one of the most humiliating tenures that any prime minister has ever had uh you turned on top of um 
U-turns on core policies, backstabbing, um, infighting, chaos. Her, her administration's had it all. And, and it sounds like, too, that there's so many contributing factors. It wasn't like there was one item that really had made this into an effect. You said, uh, you know, there were so many policies that she reversed and had taken those, as you mentioned, U-turns on, uh, that uh, ever since she took uh, stepped into that position, that that really is, is, had led to this downfall. Yes, and, you know, what I also spoke about there, I didn't even mention the uh, resignation of her Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, who just a couple of weeks ago says it was her dream to see uh, a plane of migrants take off to go to Rwanda. So, you know, the, 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 her, her administration has had lots of controversies. Uh, Suella Braverman's resignation now... Number 10 were very keen on saying it wasn't so much of a sacking. It was very much a, reg um, a resignation because she broke the ministerial code because she sent um, a draft ministerial statement um, to a colleague on a private phone when that is apparently a big no-no uh, for the ministerial code. Um, so number 10 were very keen to emphasize that Suella Braverman's um, exit from the cabinet and from the government was a resignation and not so much a sacking in her own letter. She says that she had to take responsibility for her own actions. But that's the thing with Liz Trust. There has been one thing after another, U-turn, followed by sackings, followed by people coming into the government that have been at odds with other members of the cabinet, um, that just, it was never going to work. Having um, Jeremy Hunt as chancellor with Suella Braverman as Home Secretary, in terms of in the middle of the Conservative Party, they are ideologically opposed. So one could argue that it was never going to work. There's been full of infighting. But what is very clear is that Sir Graham Brady, who's the chairman of the 1922 committee, who is in charge of this leadership contest now for a new prime minister and a new leader of the Conservative Party, it is what is very key and what is very clear is that they want this contest to be over and done with as soon as possible. Because what we had over the summer, we had this six week long contest, blue on blue in fighting that Labour could take advantage of. That is the um, the other party, uh, the other, the main opposition party um, in our country, the Labour Party. Um, so there was this long drawn out leadership contest. You had blue on blue in fighting that Labour could take advantage of and that and that had a lot of political instability in our country particularly when you know we have this cost of living crisis we have this energy crisis we have this mortgage crisis we have the pound in free fall what this country does not need is more political instability and that is why there is the need to rush this new um leadership contest so to speak because what we basically need we need a prime minister that can actually steer the ship and that can actually get this country through these political and economic crises and and you're speaking Speaking to uh, something I wanted to bring up to the Conservative Party, obviously they're going to be rushing to try to find someone to replace trust as soon as possible. This is going to be the fifth leader over the past six years. Are people losing confident, uh, confidence in the party? And of course, they're also not wanting it to go to a general election because then that gives more of a chance to the Labour Party. Well. Well, the polls at the moment have it that Labour are currently at least 30 point ahead of the Conservatives. So if there was to be a general election called right now, they're, they're, we're talking an utter annihilation electorally of the Conservative Party, which is why the Conservatives at any point want to avoid a general election, because also one doesn't know what the Conservative Party actually stands for at the moment. You know, Liz Truss said she wanted one thing. She was elected on a certain set of policies, forced to U-turn on pretty much nearly every one of those policies. The Conservative Party doesn't know what it is or what it stands for at the moment. And any sort of leader that they that they would stand with at the moment would not really have the man would not really have that much of a mandate. So so the whole point is is the Conservative Party want to avoid a general election as as much as possible because there would be an utter annihilation by the Labour Party. Uh, Sakia Starmer, who's Labour Party leader, says they are a government in waiting. They have a stable plan, even though actually, you know, it's clear amongst 
or, or at least it, it's very much a lot of commentators think that actually the Labour Party have no proper viable opposition right now. But that's what that's the thing. The feeling in our country is that, yes, uh, you, you, you know, the government right now is absolutely hopeless. The state of our politics is an absolute mess. It's an absolute shambles. But actually, like if the, if there was to be a general election, it would be electoral suicide for the Conservative Party. And when we think about uh, some of these uh, individuals who could be pushing themselves forward, saying, I want to be the next prime minister, obviously it's going to be a tough position to be putting yourself into. Uh, but uh, who are some of those frontline leaders? Who are some of those names that have been brought up? Because I even heard the name Boris Johnson could be possibly mm. in the running. He could be facing off against Rishi Sunak as well. Uh, so uh, what are your thoughts on who uh, the people in Britain, as well as the party leaders, could get behind and be united behind? So the the party leader, it's it's exactly what you said. The, the the candidate that will be our next prime minister will need to be able to unite the Conservative Party. What the next prime minister needs is at least first and foremost, it's going to be a contest of two stages. They will first need a hundred names within the parliamentary party in order to go forward to that for the online virtual vote to the Conservative uh, membership. So the current front runners, I would say, are there. There has been that Boris, there is reports that Boris Johnson um, is considering putting, very much putting himself forward to return as the Prime Minister. However, I'm not, personally, I'm not sure if he'll actually get through to the final ballot because remember, Boris Johnson was ousted by his ministers who, uh, who handed in letters of resignation. He was ousted by the parliamentary party. So he would need at least a hundred names of the parliamentary party in order to get on the final ballot for the Conservative membership. So yes, Boris Johnson might be considering running, but whether or not he'll get the votes, that's another question. I think the other two big names that are being very much considered at the moment are Rishi Sunak. He was the one that got down to the final two against Liz Truss in the leadership contest. He is uh, the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, therefore he has the economic background effectively Liz Truss's failures as Prime Minister was effectively almost a vindication for um, uh, Rishi Sunak's policies because he said not what the party wanted to hear but what he thought would stable the ship economically which has kind of been proven almost correct so the, the the conservative party could unite under him another contender as well has been Penny Mordaunt um Penny Morden, she said, because she actually came third in the leadership contest um, against Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. She was very popular amongst the grassroots. She's she's kind of seen as somebody that aligns with the kind of um, Jeremy Hunt side of the party, but also is quite popular with the grassroots candidates. As she said, with um, uh, when she ran for party leader during the summer um, and she got down to the final three, she said, I am the candidate that Labour fears most. So she could, uh, affect, she could, in theory, unite the party in terms of electoral chances going into the general election, um, the next scheduled general election in two years, or Rishi Sunak could make a comeback saying, well, Liz Truss's policies were an abstract failure. Um, my policies were the right policies to go by. I've been vindicated. You should get behind me. But then as well, um, people like the former culture secretary Nadine Dorries argue that Boris Johnson was the one with the mandate from the British people. He was the one that landed the landslide victory in the last uh, general election with this 80 seat majority. He's the one that the grassroots really want. He is the prime minister. He was the one who was ousted by colleagues in the uh, parliamentary party and not necessarily by the people in a vote. So you, it's very interesting the dynamics at play you've got three candidates all of which have pros and cons against them and as we uh, look further into these candidates and possibly who knows uh, who may also just come up all of a sudden over this weekend i'm sure that timeline though of uh, the conservative party they're really trying to uh, get it moved through as quickly as possible Yes, absolutely. Because lot over the summer, we had the six week long fought out leadership battle, uh, which Labour could take advantage of and nitpick at every little policy that 
any of the candidates are saying on, on the stage or at the hustings, it's very clear. So Graham Brady wants this to be done by next Friday, within, within a week maximum. And we actually could, in theory, actually have our Prime Minister on Monday because at the press conference today, Sir Graham Brady said that if, if there is only one candidate that gets past the 100 um, MP member of parliament threshold, the 100 members of the parliament, parliamentary party threshold, um, if there is only that one candidate that gets past that, they will then be the prime minister, and there will no and there will be no need to take the vote over to the uh, to the to the Conservative Party membership of 300,000 people via virtual vote. So, in theory we could have our next prime minister in a matter of days but it is very clear that there is this very short timeline it's they're not going to have any postal votes um in terms of the party membership it's all going to be done virtually it's all going to be done quickly the conservative party don't want this long drawn out contest they want this to be over as soon as possible because they know they need to steer the ship the conservative party has always had this reputation of fiscal responsibility and they know that this whole crisis right now is damaging that reputation. They know that economically for the markets, for the pound, for energy, um, for the cost of living crisis, they need to get the ship. They need to steer the ship back on track and political instability will only hinder that. So therefore they need the leadership contest to be done with as soon as possible. What the markets don't like is they don't like uncertainty and a long drawn out leadership contest would only add to that, would only provide just that. So a short contest of a week we'll hopefully find our prime minister soon we'll hopefully unite the conservative party that's what the conservative party or that's what the back bet that's what the parliamentary party that's what sir graham brady that's effectively i think what the country at least want in the short term is for the conservative party to unite to get us through this crisis right and it, it is their duty to put someone in place do so quickly uh, so that they can try to fix some of these uh, crises that you have been pointing out uh, that are happening across the country Country. Any final things that you want to uh, make note of here, Josh, as we uh, continue to watch uh, this fallout over these next few days and into this weekend? Anything you think important to mention when it comes to how people in Britain are feeling or even uh, what we're going to be seeing here in these next few days to come? Well, in terms of first things first, um, I would like to mention His Majesty the King. You know, when we look at who his mother, Her Majesty, her late Majesty, had for her, five, for her first prime minister, she had a statesman, a war leader, the, fa the father of the nation, as he was known at the time, the grandfather of the nation, um, as he was known at the time, uh, Winston Churchill, who got this country through the perils of World War II and who led the fight against Nazism. Um, by the time the King gets... Uh, coronated um, on Saturday the 6th of May 2023, he will be into at least and it's important to say at least because we never know where it's going to go, he will be into his at least second prime minister as well. So that I think is important to mention, you know, Liz Truss is will be known as the shortest serving prime minister in this country. Um, she resigned on her 44th day of premiership. Um, her tenure her administration will last no longer than 52 days at um, a maximum maybe 53 54 days um that would that's important to mention you know when we look at the realms of pop culture even you know the marriage of uh, kim kardashian west and chris humphreys of 72 days lasted longer than liz truss's tenure as prime minister that i think says it all yeah, there's been a lot of uh, different uh, memes as well as uh, different pop culture references uh, to her serving for just 44 days. I'm sure they're only yeah, going to continue. I want to mention one thing quickly. So one of the papers in the United Kingdom, the Daily Star, actually for the last couple of days has had a live feed. Who can, um, can a lettuce um, outlast the Prime Minister, Liz Truss? And as it happens is this live feed, this lettuce in this live feed, has outlasted Liz Truss and this lettuce has made it into the realms of UK pop culture and there are so many memes going around on social media at the moment of how this one lettuce has outlasted Liz Truss. People are saying I've got items in my fridge and in my pantries in my um, 
kitchen cupboards um, that have that that are older than uh, Liz Truss's entire tenure as prime minister. So you know this is this is her legacy, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. It is sad to think about. And too, I think something else that people had pointed out was that she had made remarks at uh, her, the late Majesty the Queen's uh, funeral. And uh, so this is going to be some of the only things she's going to be remembered for is going to be, uh, as you mentioned, you turning some of those big policies, uh, speaking at the Queen's funeral, and then also uh, not lasting very long when she was serving as Prime Minister, a piece of lettuce uh, outlasting her. So uh, we do appreciate you explaining a lot of this, especially as this is going to be still continuing to unfold here over these next few days. Josh Rahm joining us here on Live Now from Fox. Thank you so much, Josh. We appreciate all your insight. Pleasure.